All right. So with this outline, um, you do not have to answer the objectives. Granted, if you can answer the objectives, um, you'll get an A on the test. You do have to answer the highlighted questions, and that's what we're going to answer. But I want to go down to this question first. Describe uh, what three principles should nursing assistants remember as they plan and carry out their work? Yeah. Huh? So, oh my God, I my kids. I, I, I already said, so I have to give it to people who are absent. Um, All right. <laughs> I literally just said. All right. So, um, here we go. And that's what they want us to do. They want us to zoom with the classes. So if you're absent, you can zoom in. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not set up to do that, nor do I care. Uh, but this is cool. I wish I could do that with everybody. There's just not enough time. So the first principle. Is patients come first? Patient care comes first. Can you guys see that back there? Or is that too small? I'm on page. I can make it bigger. Woo. Patient care comes first. Two. Staff works as a team. Three, any unfinished assignments, incidents, or changes in patient condition must be reported to the supervisor or next shift. So you might see that there's these pink lines here. That's because um, I got Grammarly. Um, and that should be patient care. And that should be the staff. Inpatient condition. I spelled that right. All right. So now it elaborates that uh, in the book. We should never ignore a call for help or somebody in danger. That takes priority. Um, and we should always be cooperative and help others. So that was 17. That's a question on the quiz. Uh, and people are getting that wrong. So I'm going to digress. Does everybody have 17? Everybody good? I'm going to go to no what? Last one? I, I'm doing 17. Then I'm going to go back to one. I'm doing 17 because half of the people in here did this already. And if they want to take the quiz now, you can take the quiz. Um, just make sure you do your exit tickets first because the exit tickets are on the quiz. All right. So we're coming back. Um, if you are interested in healthcare, care, um, you should definitely read all this. The, what the duties include. They fall under the responsibilities of a nursing assistant. So what is meant by the scope of practice? That takes you back to what page? Page 13. Some people would tell me we didn't see the page numbers there. All right, I can't help you. Um, these are the skills you are legally allowed to Perform. Now, you could say a nursing assistant, but like an RN has a scope of practice, a doctor has a scope of practice. And that's what should make like red flags go off in your head is when um, doctors or nurses are performing outside of the scope of practice. Um, that's why they have nurses and medical assistants in the room during female examinations and children examinations, where the guardian should be in the room. So what tasks are you not legally permitted to perform? So there's actually a long list. 
I'm going to give you the um, important ones. Give medications. So a nursing assistant is not allowed to give medications or diagnose or prescribe medication, uh, treatments or medications. Or take oral or phone orders from a physician. Or D, insert or remove tubes. Now, if they go through training on these procedures, well, then that's different. This breadcrumb on my keyboard is driving me crazy. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Everybody ready? All aboard? All right, so then the outline talks about OBRA. I can fix that. It's a quick one. So, define confidentiality. That's on page 18. The principal. not revealing patient information so here's another good thing is how much an employer nursing assistant maintain privacy with computers follow all computer policies and make sure The screen positioned away from public view. And that's just a good lesson for life. Katie's probably the only person that could see my screen, and I'm sharing it now. But I've known people who've been fired because they open emails or text messages from friends, and they're a dirty picture. Yeah, and somebody sees it, a student or a patient, and they're fired. Just like that. that that's a um, no tolerance policy in a lot of places. So it's very important that you do not go on and access personal information on a professional laptop. Like I do have my Gmail on here because it's how my son's school district communicates with me, but it's a fine line. Um, so, and in healthcare, we have to keep the patient information safe and private all right let me know when you're ready jeff you seem to be in my pace car so let me know when you're ready all right so ethical and legal issues in a sentence ethical Considerations involve doing what is right and meeting your responsibilities. Right? So you have a responsibility as a junior or senior in high school to stay safe, stay alive, and to do your schoolwork, and also to be there for your family, right? in no particular order. Those are your priorities. If you're a senior, you're to graduate. That's your whole mission in life between now and June. Everybody, there's less than 80 days of school. Drag yourself across the finish line, whatever you have to do. Succeed, and that is ethical. Now, what is right is different from community to community, right? 
society to society, country to country, people have a different idea of what is right. For example, a German volleyball team is not participating in the beach volleyball contest in Dubai this upcoming summer. Why? Because Dubai has strict wardrobe clothes, particularly for women. It's also between 90 and 100 degrees plus there. So the German volleyball team doesn't want to wear those clothes. So they're not going. That's what is right in one society is not right in another. So standards of care. Also, another reason to wear um, clothes because you don't want to get sunburned in Dubai. Like, that's like a third degree burn right there, man. Holy moly. Mother of mom. Okay, standards of care. Here we go, yeah. Set of guidelines. That serve as a model. This is on page 18. So if you're watching this, just go to page 18. They're all there. For good nursing assistant care. <laughs> Liable means legally responsible. So if you didn't do this yet, you should be doing it, right? Doing it. Negligent is unintentional harm. So that could be caused by a babysitter, a nursing assistant, somebody who didn't put their emergency brake on in their car. Um, you're negligent when it's your responsibility. Okay. Now, practice. Who commits malpractice? Who wants to shout that out? Unintentional harm by who? Right. By doctor, nurse, or pharmacist. And we often think of doctors, if they perform surgery wrong or they operate on the wrong patient, which happens a lot. And it happens. That's crazy poop. They want they wanted to do it. They almost, they did that to my dad once. As a model. Okay. So on the page, on the top of page 19, there's four ways a nursing assistant can be negligent. One, uh, disregarding the supervisor's instructions. We're almost done. Okay, four main tasks. Yeah, I never think of that. Woo, look at that. Press tag. I, I think I need to think of that. Or on safely. Say four minute task without proper training. For D. Four minute Test that is beyond our scope of practice, even if we're told to. Okay. Any questions? Any problems? Yo, I'll solve it. Catch the hook as the DJ revolves it. Are we good for eight and nine? Huh? Thank you. Are we good for 10? All right, we're almost done. Physical abuse is physical harm. And that could be restraining somebody against their will, unnecessary force, um, false imprisonment. Sexual abuse falls under that. That's awful. Verbal abuse is yelling. Or threatening a patient. 
So I hear that less. I hear physical harm more. You hear that in law enforcement. You hear about when a tech has to restrain somebody. And these patients know how to push buttons. And people lose it. You know, you just run out of patience. You have to learn to walk away. We'll talk about that. Psychological abuse. This um, belittling or threatening a patient. So belittling is when you make them feel less than themselves. And why do we use that word threaten? Because you're making them feel afraid, making them feel less than themselves or afraid. So that's where physical harm and verbal abuse can become psychological abuse. You know, when somebody just is like a curmudgeon, just always whispering in your ear. And I guess one of the issues in our society now is this is on social media. Um, it seems we have trouble straightening our masks and getting away from bullies. Whoop. So we're almost done. Did you guys get all this? All right, 14, what is the purpose of the patient chart? There's only one paragraph on that in chapter two. We'll discuss that more. Um, it's a record. It's a record of patient care and, sir, and communicates. This care to team members. Kind of sums up that paragraph in the flow chart. It's on page 20. Any questions? Everybody good for 14? Thank you. All right, 15. So there's a lot we could say about why somebody should be healthy, hygienic, and keep their appearance. Um, on page 20, they give several reasons. Um, and that is to set an example for others. Job is physically demanding. Um, and the other one, we work closely with patients. So, tell you fellas, it's not generally a ladies' issue, but we want to make sure we have our deodorant and BO covered up. You know, one way, right? It's not seriously acceptable in this country to smell bad. Sure story. And it's gonna, the job is gonna get demanding, and we're, you're gonna sweat, and it's gonna smell. So you want to make sure you find something that works. We work closely with patients. So, working well with others. Describe the importance. Um, we need to rely on the other, on one another. So getting along is important. All right, we're almost done. We did number 17. Anybody have any questions? So if you're done, you want to check your grade book, make sure you're not missing anything, make sure you're not missing exit tickets, they're on your quizzes. And this kind of comes back to the hygiene and healthcare. Um, describe the importance of personal care um, to overcome job stress. We still have like six minutes left. You guys aren't going anywhere. So you guys do this. To overcome job stress, one should balance work 
with rest and leisure activities. That time's good. So you have to find a balance in life. Um, I do have to say, um, healthcare is physically demanding and probably one of the toughest things in education, industry, healthcare, whatever it is, you just gotta stay physically fit. You gotta eat right. You know, one of the first things we grab in our society is a cup of coffee, and maybe we should be grabbing a glass of water. 